Hey, this is Rick. I'm with Flood Rescue Academy. We're out here shooting a couple of videos for YouTube while well, things are kind of slow this time of year, but we want to keep you guys interested and peaked and everything else. So today we're going to talk about pre-planning your problem areas. This is one thing we cover a lot in class. Pre-planning does not stop basically until you get in the water and even then you have to adjust your plan on the fly. But we teach success through preparation. So in your area, the best way to get set up to do an actual rescue is go look at your potential problem areas. Now, unfortunately, we're in kind of a dry spot here in Central Texas because I encourage you to look at your problem areas when they're actually flooding. But don't, don't despair. You can actually look at problem areas when they're not in flood conditions. You just got to know what to look for. So we're on the San Gabriel hike and bike trail outside of Georgetown, Texas. So this is actually not a roadway. It's just kind of a running trail slash bike trail. But imagine if you've got a hike, hiker, walker, biker, dog walker, something like that, that came off of this and you got called out that somebody got swept downstream. So let's look at this from a flood standpoint. First off, how high can the water get? Well, when I first got here, I got to looking around and I've got a pretty good clue might be a little bit hard to see, but if you look at it, there's a little bit of debris up here in this tree. So we know for a fact the water gets at least that high, which is going to cover the roadway probably three feet in depth. Now, so the water's going to be flowing this way, obviously coming from that way. So first things first, if we try to access this victim from upstream, we've got one major obstacle in our way right here, which you can clearly see. That's a low head dam. Low head dams create hydraulics. Hydraulics we want no part of. So we're going to have to access from downstream of that low head dam, which cuts off a lot of our area up there. Now the good news is low head dams also trap downstream debris somewhat effectively so your upstream spotter might sort of kind of get the day and or night off but don't not place them just because of that. So we look downstream you'll notice the waterway goes down there and does a bit of a curve. Both sides of the waterway brush covered and everything else. So when we're looking at where to place our downstream spotters, we don't have a lot of advantageous positions here. So keep that in mind. We like nice wide open spaces for our downstream spotters. And don't forget when you send your downstream spotters down there, take a lot of throw bags with you. So if you look at it downstream, you got a little bit of cliff edge right here, which is great for keeping your people out of water. But most of the brush is on that side. So something to keep in mind when you're putting your downstream guys. This side is lower, which means the water is gonna probably up and spread around, especially if you look at just to the left of this low head here, here which is actually gonna be on river right. There's a lot of flow coming around that dam, which is gonna keep coming out this direction. So right now, theoretically, I'm standing on dry land as it is right now. But in a flood situation, based on the water height, my upstream spotters may be 25, 35 yards back based on water flow from where I'm standing right now. So things you gotta look at. The other things you wanna do is, when you're looking at a problem area for placing downstream spotters, don't just go out and look at something in flood conditions, take photos, take notes, everything else. Obviously do that, but when you're looking at spots to place your downstream spotters, take a throw bag with you. Find out if you've got the range, throw that bag out there. Now don't just let go and let it float down the river. That's not gonna work out the way you plan when you go back and talk to your chief about, hey, I lost the throw bag doing the planning. Um, but see if you're gonna have the range where the flow is gonna go, okay? Look for places where the water's gonna bring the victim to you versus the water flow is going to take it opposite from where you're at. So always keep that in mind. So when you go do planning, take a throw bag. The other thing is, when you're looking at setting up more complex systems, like say a tension diagonal, or you're going to put a line on a boat and do a two to one drop with a boat on a rope system, you have to know if your rope's going to reach. Okay? Throw bagging is one thing. Setting up something just to see if the rope's going to reach, 
Okay, there's an easy way around that. Get yourself a range finder, one of those little laser range finders, and start calculating your distances from shore to shore, and then start looking at your anchor points. Okay, keep in mind, if you look at a lot of these trees right here, they look rock solid, but in moving water, your anchor points are going to be undergoing erosion in some form or fashion. So keep an eye on your anchors. Make sure they're not gonna get pulled over once you put something under tension or something under weight. Lastly, if you don't have good access to launch a boat, you might have to put in further upstream, but we can't here because we got a low head. You're not gonna put a boat over a low head. I mean, you do it once, it's just not gonna work out the way you originally planned. But again, pre-planning is key for everything you do and pre-planning doesn't stop until you're under the water and even then, it doesn't really quit. You just got to adjust your plan on the fly. Keep in mind, it's going to go wrong. So slow down, think. Best thing you can do is stay out of the water. Get them from the shore if at all humanly possible. Again, this is Rick. We're Flood Rescue Academy. Tune in for more. Y'all have a good day and stay safe out there.